December the 1st every year is commemorated as World AIDS Day. A day to unite in the fight to end the HIV epidemic, support people living with HIV, and honor those who've lost their lives. This year, the theme is Ending the HIV AIDS Epidemic, Resilience and Impact. The FCT administration is joining forces with the National Agency for the Control of AIDS, NACA, to raise awareness of the disease among adolescents in the FCT, hoping they adopt habits to keep them safe and learn to live with people who have HIV and AIDS in our society. Speaking of NACA, my guest on the program is the agency's Director General, Dr. Gambu Aliyu, and he talks about stigma, funding, and vaccines. In our Abuja rap, it's a yes from the President. He will honor the invitation from the House of Representatives to speak on security soon. Nigeria explores compressed natural gas as an alternative to fuel, and Abdul Rashid Mena, former chairman of the defunct Pension Reform Task Team, was caught in Niger and denied bail. All these and more this week on Dateline Abuja. Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Magua. It has been a crazy year. COVID-19, insecurity, recession. It's been rough. And as with years like this, a lot of the gains made before the system was shocked gets lost in the fray. One of such gains is the fight against HIV and AIDS, especially as a lot of government funding was focused on prevention and treatment of COVID-19. What impact did COVID-19 have on the war on AIDS? And what is this monthly antiretroviral injection everyone is talking about? We will break that down for you later in our feature story. But first, let's bring you up to speed with the major headlines from the seat of power. The president will honor the invitation of the House of Representatives to brief on the security situation in the country. The date for the briefing has not been communicated yet, but according to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Femi Bajabia Miller, the president received the invitation graciously. The House took the decision to invite the president after considering a motion on the killing of rice farmers in Borno by Boko Haram insurgents. He was ever so willing to listen, as is typical of Mr. President, uh, the usual Democrat that he is. And what we basically sought was um, uh, to convey the resolution of the House and to fix a date, which we did not fix, uh, out of respect for Mr. President and his very, very tight schedule, what date will be convenient. And um, we have agreed on a date and he will meet with the House um, to address the situation. I think he's more is more concerned than, than me or you. That's all I can say. Than me or you. You know, they say on easy lies the head that wears the crown. And, uh, uh, and, and, and we'll leave everything until when he comes to the House. Thank you, Your Excellency. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has promised to consider the recommendations made by the participants of the Senior Executive Course 42 of the National oh, Institute yes. for Policy and Strategic Studies on improving human capital development in the country. The president made this disclosure when he met with the participants in the State House. In the meantime, the president has unveiled the National Gas Expansion Program, which involves the conversion of fuel-powered cars and generators from petrol to gas. It is aimed at deepening domestic usage of natural gas in its various forms. The program is expected to extend operations to all states of the Federation. As key strategy, I have directed the Minister of State the group managing director of the NNPC and all managers of the natural gas expansion program to adopt a market-led approach in the implementation of their mandate. The program will focus on encouraging investments through the establishment of conducive and enabling environment in order to encourage and galvanize potential investors in the gas subsector of a resource-rich economy. President Buhari met with his counterpart from Gambia, President Adama Barrow, where he's pledging Nigeria's support to the Gambia as it goes to the polls in 2021. The Gambian leader told State House correspondents after the meeting that he inherited a country in distress in 2017 and he's proud of the progress made by his administration so far to fix the country's institutions. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark the year 2020 World AIDS Day, the federal government is seeking local production of drugs and test kits for AIDS. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, maintains that progress has been made with the increasing number of those receiving treatment for HIV and AIDS. 
in line with the president's directive or executive order on local content, it has become expedient for all efforts to be galvanized towards the production of antiretroviral drugs and HIV test kits in country. Meanwhile, the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 has issued a travel advisory asking Nigerians to restrict all non-essential domestic and international travel. Speaking against the backdrop of the Yuletide, the chairman of the task force warns that festive activities are potential super-spreading events that could lead to higher transmission rates and ultimately a second wave of the pandemic in the country. The Federal Executive Council has approved over 116 billion naira for more road and bridge contracts across the country. The breakdown of the projects was given by the Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, to State House Correspondents after the 26th Virtual Federal Executive Council meeting. The embattled chairman of the defunct Pension Reform Task Team, Mr. Abdul Rashid Maina, has been extradited to Nigeria to face his ongoing money laundering trial. Mr. Maina was arrested in Niamey, the capital of the Niger Republic, after he was declared wanted by an Abuja High Court. 24 hours later, officials of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission ensured his attendance in court at the resumption of his trial over alleged money laundering. Welcome back. In our feature story, we're looking at advocacy programs enlightening young adolescents on HIV and AIDS. It totally surprised me to find out that talking about HIV and AIDS is still taboo in many communities. Why? This isn't even about us being in the year 2020. No, it's just common sense to educate children on this topic and get them ready for the reality of a part of the world. Approximately 260,000 children aged 0 to 14 years were living with HIV in Nigeria in 2015 with 41,000 new infections occurring among children and only 17% of children living with HIV have access to antiretroviral therapy. That was just five years ago. They still live with us. Among children aged 14 years, HIV prevalence, according to the new data in 2019, is 0.2%. Don't take my word for it. Take a look. Nigeria joins the rest of the world to celebrate World AIDS Day 2020 in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Progress in the fight against AIDS in Nigeria had picked up and advocacy was at an all-time high in 2019. Prevalence rate of HIV and AIDS in 2001 stood at 5.8%. In 2018, it dropped to 1.3%. In 2019, the number of people living with HIV and AIDS dropped from 3.2 million people to 1.9 million persons in 2019. Its prevalence of 3.2% in 2004 dropped to 1.4% in 2019. However, that same year, the United Nations reported that 45,000 persons living with HIV and AIDS in Nigeria died in 2019. The United Nations called this figure unacceptable considering the sacrifice made by governments, partners and donors in ensuring life-saving medication is available to patients. As COVID-19 hit Nigeria in early 2020, it became clear that people with pre-existing conditions are more prone to its infection. The problem was, people with pre-existing conditions like HIV and AIDS had to frequent hospitals in the heat of the pandemic and feared getting infected. One of such patients is Lucy Enya, who heads the Society of Women and Children Living with HIV and AIDS in Abuja. I met Lucy in May of 2020. She's been living with HIV for 25 years. This center empowers over 30 people living with the disease. She tells me the COVID-19 pandemic has worsened their conditions. A lot of our members are having problems, problem of picking up their drugs because of transportation. The transportation is so high now because the ties will say you, you, you you're just two people in a ties or three people in a ties, so you cannot say affordability becomes a problem. It's like a war, you know, to us having HIV virus, and then you are also facing another pandemic. So it's a problem facing these two things. Lucy is one of the lucky ones. There's an entire demographic of people living with HIV and AIDS who are at a higher risk of being infected with COVID-19. This informed the theme for the World AIDS Day celebration this year from NACA. AIDS in the midst of COVID-19, tying it to the world theme which looks at resilience and impact while planning to end the epidemic. I want to use this medium to also thank and appreciate the American government 
as I stand here, I am a product of the American people because they have been putting me on live antiretroviral therapy for the past 11 years, and I am living healthy. <laughs> Treatment is working Murphy, and I am a symbol to demonstrate that ending AIDS by the year 2030 is possible. The federal government has an action plan to combat HIV and AIDS. The revised National HIV and AIDS Strategic Framework 2019 to 2021. The strategic framework is built on seven guiding principles political leadership and ownership, partnership and multi sectoral collaborations, rights based and gender sensitive, meaningful involvement of people living with HIV and AIDS, strategic investment programming, optimization of the health system, and community involvement, engagement, and participation. The new National Guidelines for Prevention, Treatment and Care and the National Acceleration Plan for Pediatric and Adolescent HIV Treatment and Care are examples of two initiatives which we shall be presenting here today. I shall at this point acknowledge the support of our development partners, especially the United States government the Global Fund, UNAIDS. Global Fund and the US government are jointly responsible for keeping over one million people living with HIV in treatment. And I also must mention the United Nations family, our implementing partners, as well as members of civil society for the work they do. Ladies and gentlemen, as I close, permit me to draw your attention again to the theme and re emphasize the importance of HIV testing and of staying united as we aim towards closing the remaining gaps. UNAIDS and NACA estimate that there are 1.9 million people living with HIV in Nigeria. For the Federal Capital Territory, the prevalence rate stands at 1.5% as of 2019 a medium prevalence rate. The FCT and 19 other states account for 80% of persons living with HIV and AIDS, while adolescents aged 10 to 19 years in the nation's capital account for 8% of persons living with the virus. Pape, a suburb in the nation's capital, is densely populated, and according to the Civil Society for HIV and AIDS, they account for 25% of the prevalence rate in the nation's capital while 14 out of 1,000 persons tested in the FCT are likely to be positive, according to NACA. These young people are taking part in an advocacy to promote positive health issues among their peers. As part of activities to mark the 2020 World AIDS Day, the National Agency for the Control of AIDS is enlightening young people to take responsibility for their lives as the government tries to control the spread of HIV and AIDS in the country. There's been long-standing failure to address HIV epidemic amongst young persons globally, and that ex explains why uh, the response globally is still failing as it concerns young persons. And what that tells us is that we need to do things differently. What that tells us is that we need to engage young persons in the response and find out from them. And so today, uh, we would have some young persons sharing their experiences about the challenges, the specific challenges that young persons face um, either in living with HIV or in navigating through the landmines along the way as in, in a bid to prevent uh, contracting HIV. So engaging young persons is key in protecting their health and addressing HIV epidemic as a whole. We need to enable young persons to be meaningfully engaged and, uh, in the design and delivery of programs uh, about them. We need to um, understand that, that age and context such as gender, sexuality plays a role in access to services, especially HIV AIDS services. Beyond this advocacy, the argument here is that young people should play a part in designing the programs that will be used to promote healthy lifestyles among them.
The major points I picked, me personally, is um, the part you said you know, that we should be getting tested actually, like majorly, because that's the most important um, point. Like when we are getting tested, we know our, our HIV status. My message to the government is to continue encouraging the youths on safety, on the importance of them being safe and staying healthy. And to my fellow youths, the importance of them being disease free, um, to engage in checkups, get tested, be sure of your status, be sure you know your health status is very important. Indeed, young people have a key role to play in ensuring control of HIV and AIDS. Including them in this advocacy could make the process more effective. My guest on the program is the man in charge of the fight against AIDS in Nigeria, the Director General of the National Agency for the Control of AIDS, Dr. Gambo Aliu. On Dateline this week, he talks advocacy, funding, rights, and the everlasting search for a vaccine for AIDS. Dr. Gambo Aliu, welcome to Dateline Abuja. Pleasure to be here. Well, let's talk a bit about this 90-90-90 goal. Uh, the target, I see, is to reduce the spread of HIV and AIDS by 90%. Isn't that a bit ambitious? So far, we've gone 75% of the first 90. Um, and of those 75% that we've identified, we've gone about 80%, you know, in terms of getting them on treatment. And of those that are on treatment, we've gone beyond 80% in terms of getting them to suppress the virus in them. The goal is identify as much. If we get to 90%, 90, 90, 90, what that means is that we have achieved a level where we have 73% of those who have the virus in them, you know, um, are able to contain the virus within them and prevent the virus from leaving them to affect other people. We had to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 and a lot of funding for all sorts of research and, you know, in all kinds of diseases went into combating this pandemic that we didn't understand. Had that impacted in any way uh, with the research being done on HIV and AIDS in Nigeria? That is why you see our theme this year's World Earth Day, United to End this Amid COVID-19 Pandemic. So that speaks, that answers your question. Let's talk statistics from the United Nations. More than 12 million people are still waiting to get on HIV treatment. 1.7 million people became infected with HIV in 2019. And this figure is because they didn't have access to essential services. I know there's a global figure, but you know, developing nations are feeling this impact quite a bit. How are you coping with the treatment of people living with HIV and AIDS in Nigeria? At the moment, we have treatment waiting a treatment facility for people to come and take. And this number you're calling is taking cognizance of the fact that there are these people in our midst, um, they are there, but they are not aware of their HIV status. And the gateway to getting our support, the gateway to getting the services we provide is the tests. If you know your status today, you will know whether you qualify for our prevention packages, or you qualify for prevention and treatment and care and support packages. There are two packages. We have prevention, treatment, care and support. Some people qualify for only prevention, and some people qualify for both prevention and treatment. Unfortunately, if somebody tests HIV positive, then that person qualifies for prevention, um, prevention plus treatment package, care and support. And what that means is that we work with this individual to keep HIV within them and deny HIV opportunity to leave them and affect other people and deny HIV the opportunity to make them sick. That's a question I've always wanted to ask people who work with HIV and AIDS. We had to deal with COVID-19 and in one year we saw vaccines coming out over 90% effectiveness from the one from Pfizer. Over 90 percent success rate. There's so many other vaccines that have come up for a pandemic that we had no idea about. A pandemic, a disease that shocked everybody. But HIV has been with us for so long, for decades. No vaccine. No vaccine. What's going on? Yeah, what is going on is that HIV is different. It's a different virus. I get it. It changes, you know. 
uh, continuously. It changes its shape. It changes its shape like chameleon changes its color. Other viruses don't do that. If they remain the way they are, like lizard, eh, you can aim at that color and hit it, and hit it forever. But if it changes color, like chameleon changes color, it is difficult. Now you aim green. In the next two hours, it is blue. Or it is white. Does it get more dangerous as it mutates? Yeah, it gets more dangerous as it mutates because it resists the drug. And that is why we keep telling um, our clients it is important to adhere to medication. It is important to keep taking this medication the way they are prescribed. Simply because if you do that, you are denying the virus that opportunity to mutate and I'm change. Going to ask, how do antiretrovirals work then? If, if, this is a, if this is a disease that constantly mutates, so how do antiretrovirals work? That's why we, we, we use more than one drug. There are different mechanisms of action. There is the entry, those ones that prevent the virus from getting into the cell, which is the, the, the protection, the cells that provide protection to the human body. If it enters the cells, it doesn't only stop inside the cells, it goes to the nucleus. It goes to integrate into the DNA. Every step of the way, there are drugs that come in between HIV and the next activity that is important. And that's why we combine this drug so that if it escapes the first one, it will be hit by the second one. You know, if it escapes the second one, it may get arrested by the third one. That way, we can get to effectively deny HIV the opportunity, you know, to continue to grow. The, the, the problem with it is that the more it grows, the more it gets out of the person that has it, you know, to affect the person that doesn't. It becomes more doesn't. infectious. It becomes more infectious. Yeah. And the more you deny it the opportunity, the more you don't even see it. There's a new study that showed that there is an injection that is more effective than the regular daily pill. In fact, uh, they say it's more effective in women in preventing the HIV infection. Do we have any such opportunity in Nigeria? Is there any effort to have it here? We haven't commissioned that here in Nigeria. We are looking at the data um, that are coming from other places that are using or have introduced this regimen. And um, once we are satisfied with the data, and when we are satisfied that um, there are no untoward effects, we will be happy to also introduce it for our people, um, for our clients to pick and choose. If you want to remain with pills, fine and good. If you feel you're going to do better with injection, then come and try it. Doctor, before we go, I want you to talk about the HIV self-test kits. Uh, that are available in many parts of the world. In rural areas in Nigeria, where people may not have access to standard facilities to check their viral load and things like that, is that an option for them? Is there something being done to make this available for them? Yes. What is, what is more important is the information. The facility may be there nearby, close to them, maybe one, hand, one kilometer or two kilometers, but because of lack of information, they don't know. And that is why we are encouraging people once you test HIV positive, just call our center, 6222, and demand for or ask for information, you know, uh, about the nearest facility that provides these services. Our people will guide you. There are people that have HIV, don't want to come to our facility to check medication. They want to buy. They want to go to private facilities, and they want to make private arrangement to have this medication. They are free to do, and they are, they are free to pay. Um, if you go to a public facility and you are charged, uh, please let us know. If you go to a private facility of your choice and they ask you to pay, please make a decision. If you want to pay, go ahead. If you want to come to us, you are welcome. Dr. Kambu Ali, thank you so much for speaking with us. My pleasure. Our hope is not lost. Significant efforts have been made in recent years to stop new HIV infections among children, with President Buhari launching the revised National HIV and AIDS Strategic Framework 2019 to 2021, which should guide the country's future response to the epidemic. It is so important to talk to children about HIV and AIDS and let them know the parts that they must play in staying safe and protecting those who have the disease from stigma. 
To end the stigma of HIV and AIDS, you must be your brother or sister's keeper, to be honest. With the right medication and lifestyle change, many people living with HIV will live longer than most of us. That's our show today. Share your thoughts on today's program on the social media handles on your screen. And as always, keep us updated in the happenings in your neighborhood. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kayla Magua. See you next time.